Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and we're moving on in AP Chemistry with a video that covers two fairly short yet rather important sections here in AP Chemistry, sections 4.3 and 4.4. .4. Now, Unit 4, Section 3 is about how we can portray chemical reactions in a graphical form or in a pictorial form. So we're going to try an example here. And this is a, a fairly typical question that they might ask you on an exam, like an AP exam or something like that, where we have a balanced equation. We have 2NO plus O2 yields 2NO2. And we're given a, a blank box to fill in to show what the reactant mixture would have looked like. And then we're given a a box that has the product mixture here at the end of the reaction. It gives us kind of a legend here at the bottom. It shows us that the oxygen atom are the white circles and the nitrogen atoms are represented by the, the gray circles. We have to remember that when you have a balanced equation, those coefficients represent a recipe for producing the appropriate numbers of molecules or ions or atoms or whatever you're trying to make in the reaction. So what you want to do here is first of all count up how many atoms you're working with. So as I count up the atoms I see that there are there seem to be eight nitrogen atoms. Those are the ones in gray and I believe I'm counting up 12 oxygen atoms which are the white circles. Now another thing I want to notice is that in the product mixture that you have here at the end, notice that the product is nitrogen dioxide, but you actually have a couple of nitrogen monoxide molecules that never reacted. And so those are basically molecules that were left over. Here in our upcoming video, we'll call that an excess reactant. So these molecules never really did anything. So I'm just going to take those 4NO molecules and I'm just going to pop those over here into the reactant box because they, they were actually there starting out. They never did anything. So that takes care of four nitrogens and four oxygens. And so now I'm down to four nitrogens and eight oxygens that I have to work with. And those are the atoms that I'm going to use to work backwards and to create my molecules of the reactants. And so the recipe here tells me that for every two molecules of nitrogen monoxide, I'm going to have one molecule of oxygen, O2. So I'm, I'm going to do that once. And so I'm going to draw two NOs and one O2, kind of like this over here. And that means that I'm down to two nitrogen atoms and four oxygen atoms left. So I can do that again and draw two more nitrogen monoxide molecules and one oxygen molecule. And it looks like this. And now I've used up all my atoms. So if you're asked to do this, and sometimes it could be in the opposite direction from reactants to products, just make sure that you have the same number of atoms for each element on both sides of the arrow. So, you know, I had eight nitrogen atoms, 12 oxygen atoms. We can't destroy atoms. We have to have the same numbers of nitrogens and oxygens, you know, for each uh, side there. We can't change one element into another. And so you can't somehow magically take an oxygen, a white circle, and turn it into a, a gray circle. It doesn't work that way. You have to have eight nitrogens, 12 oxygens, on both sides. Also, have to respect the recipe here, that, that ratio of two NOs to one O2. So that's how you would, would solve something like this. Now, we're going to move right on into section four of unit four. And this is about chemical changes and physical changes. So earlier in unit four, section one, uh, we took a look at how certain things are physical changes, like melting or tearing something up or breaking it, as opposed to chemical changes, which are things like burning and rusting and oxidizing and things like that. But what if I give you this? If I say solid salt is dissolved in water, is that a chemical change or is that a physical change? Now, if you give this question to a student who's just starting out in first year chemistry or maybe into maybe uh, a, a middle school science class, the student and even the teacher might say, well, that sure looks like a physical change because you're just dissolving something. You still have salt. You still have water. But 
Is it completely a physical change? Well, think about it in this, in this way. We know, as we've learned in this course already, back in Unit 2 and the Unit 3 as well, that if you have an ionic compound like sodium chloride and you dissolve it in water, ionic bonds are actually being broken. And so chemical bonds are actually being broken in this process. In fact, the only way that an ionic compound can dissolve into water is if the ion dipole forces between water and the ions are stronger than the ionic bonds that hold that formula unit or that, uh, that crystal together. So yeah, bonds are actually being broken here. Uh, we know that ion dipole forces are forming and they are quite strong, like we said. And the structure of that ionic crystal lattice is being broken. And ions are certainly being rearranged. And so this particular process actually has some characteristics of a chemical process as well. And so if we were to just dogmatically say, well, this is a physical change, well, we're ignoring some very important chemistry that's actually going on when an ionic compound is being dissolved. And so the point of this statement here is that sometimes the line between a physical change and a chemical reaction is not as obvious as it seems. Sometimes it's a little blurrier. This, this particular process, and any time you have an ionic compound dissolved into water, you have that, that, that blurriness there. there. There are some characteristics of a physical change, but it certainly has characteristics of a chemical reaction as well. Uh, and so it's not as obvious as it might seem. So this is something that you do need to be aware of as you're thinking about the difference between a, a physical change and a chemical reaction. I hope you learned something from this uh, rather short video over these two uh, rather short but important sections. If you learned something, please hit that thumbs up button. I, I do appreciate it. Hope you join me in a very uh, important and much longer section in uh, Unit 4, Section uh, 5, which is going to cover reaction stoichiometry.